Hi guys, this is Fo. Uh, so I used to uh, collect a lot of DVDs and um, uh, what happened is uh, we used to have a video store called uh, Hollywood Video and um, when they get, they would order a lot of new releases and then when those new releases weren't being rented out, they would sell the uh, those new DVDs at a very reduced price and so I out of habit I just started buying their used uh, DVDs and of course I ended up just uh, when they went out of business uh, they also had a huge sale and I ended up uh, owning about I would say like 4,000 5,000 DVDs now so I started working on my blu-ray and of course now we have 4k in which I don't think I'm gonna go into 4k as much as I have with uh, blu-ray uh, but anyway so here um, so the point is I have too many uh, physical media and so I try to limit myself by buying only I try to buy only um, steelbooks so I'm going to show you my uh, DC Comics uh, Warner Brothers um, uh, steelbook collection so first off we have Batman and Robin um, this is um, a steelbook uh, I do not like uh, this style of steelbook. It is a um, kind of like a matted feel. It's not glossy at all and it just looks very cheap uh, but it's still very cool if uh, you collect the steelbooks. Um, uh, these are Target exclusive so you must buy. All these um, uh, animated series are going to be Target um, exclusive uh, and un unless there are exceptions which I'll mention later on. Uh, so this uh, is, uh, and by the way, I, I don't have a complete collection. This is the stuff I could find at my local Target. I just refuse to pay extra price for the ones I'm missing. Uh, next is Batman Bad Blood. This is uh, more of the Bat family. So you got like Nightwing over here, uh, Batman. Again, uh, that matted finish that I'm not too crazy about. This is the back of the steelbook. Uh, actually, I'll show you the back of the other steelbook here. Uh, so it's Batman and Robin, Batman Bad Blood, and let me see. There is interior artwork. Uh, it's not that exciting actually. Let's take a look at the, there's two discs. See, not very exciting. I probably won't be showing all the interior unless there's something I remember that's really cool and that I'll, I'll show you. But basically, it's just very, very bland. It's just a, it looks like the city here. All right, so all right. Uh, next, just the League uh, Gods and Monsters. Um, this is the front of the steel book, and then this is the back. Uh, not very exciting in the back. Uh, this, um, I remember really liking this one actually. Uh, I thought that was very, very good. I think it's based on a, a comic book, uh, but I haven't read the original comic, so the watching the, the animated series is actually very good. This is actually Wonder Woman here. Uh, in her, it's a very different Amazon. They're from a different uh, Earth, I guess. And then, um, and that's I think that's Superman, and then or Batman. <laughs> it's been a while since I saw this. Gods and monsters. We're skipping out of order, by the way. But um, this is uh, Batman: The Killing Joke. So, so what happened is uh, I like to keep all my Batman. A steelbook together <laughs> and so this is uh, Batman the Killing Joke um, this has a, a very nice glossy um, cover to it and as you can see on the top I have a little dent on here um, this was the only steelbook I could find and so I didn't mind the little bumps but I mean I would obviously would uh, like to get a, a more decent uh, version of this this cover is by Brian Bolin. He is uh, one of my favorite artists. So um, 
It's absolutely beautiful uh, to have the Joker in his iconic um, smile pose here. The back is not by <laughs> Brian Bolin. It uh, looks like a digital artist uh, painted this, uh, and uh, it shows the the fairground that uh, the Joker and Batman know. So the problem with the Killing Joke actually is that uh, the original graphic novel was not very long. It's very short. It's written by Alan Moore, obviously, and uh, with art by Brian Bolin. And um, it was never meant to be adapted as a two-hour length movie. So what happened is, for the movie, they decided to add a whole new <laughs> beginning intro to the movie. So th this first part of the movie is about Batgirl and Batgirl having a crush on Batman and, and they had sex. I don't know if I want to spoil that, but uh, it's um, it just was did not really fit in with the rest of the, the, the story, which is the, the killing joke, which is a very dark uh, take on the Joker. And uh, also somebody would say that that is probably the most definitive uh, Joker story because it kind of shows you his origin. And um, it's... Um, just really, um, uh, uh, once the Alan Moore part kicks in, that's when the movie actually gets be much, much better. Uh, so when Batman visited Asylum to to meet the fake Joker, that's that's when uh, the movie really starts, in my opinion. But obviously, uh, it's not very long, so they had to pad it out. And uh, uh, if you uh, look online, nobody likes that extra un unnecessary part of the Batman. If only they just taken out that part, first part, but then it wouldn't really be a movie. It would be more like a, a 20 minute feature or whatever. All right, that's uh, the Batman the Killing Joke. All right, next we have Batman the Return of the Cape Crusader. This is an animated uh, Batman based on the uh, 1960s uh, cult classic television show. Uh, and it is, I believe, voiced by Adam West. And this is one of his final uh, film before uh, he passed away so and uh, it also featured Burt Ward um, returning to voice the, uh, the iconic characters and anyway the back says to the bat cave it's uh, features that phone and the bat single um, but yeah I, I really I do love the, the artwork uh, on the front here so this is glossy as you can see uh, I, I do love the glossy steel books by the way so those uh, I prefer all right, next we have Batman and Harley Quinn. Um, this, uh, I wasn't too crazy about this one. Um, it's, uh, it seems like kind of like, I uh, just, you know, was unnecessary to have this Harley Quinn. Obviously, um, DC thinks that Harley Quinn is very popular and, you know, decide to give her um, more... Um, focus in the Suicide Squad movie and also uh, now that she has an, her own animated series I, which I've heard is actually very good and um, but for this movie it felt really unnecessary and um, they could have put their um, efforts in probably another animated uh, feature but Batman and Harley Quinn more like Harley Quinn and Batman uh, this is uh, Batman Gotham by Gaslight. Uh, this is, uh, I believe, the first Elseworld story um, way back in 90-something, 90 91 maybe. Uh, um, originally, a design, uh, art was designed by Mike McNola, but obviously the artwork is not based on his uh, uh, Batman likeness. Um, Mike McNola has a very unique style. And um, so this uh, really doesn't represent Mike Magnoa's um, art style at all. And in the back, it's him versus uh, Jack the Ripper over the uh, uh, Zeppelin on fire. Um, hope that didn't give away <laughs> too much if you haven't read Gotham by Gaslight or seen the movie. But um, uh, beautiful steelbook, uh, by the way. So I, I, do, I do love the this design or this look, uh, whoever did the artwork for this. Um, anyway, uh, next we have Batman Ninja. Um, now this is a very interesting take on Batman. This is not the Batman you're used to because what they did is they got uh, animation uh, writers and manga um, 
artists to redesign Batman and retell uh, the the story of Batman in as if they were uh, Japan has created Batman basically, and so um, Batman is uh, goes back in the past and he becomes uh, this kind of samurai version of Batman, and the Joker um, obviously is there with Harlequin and who else? Uh, we got Penguin. We got all the 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 Batman's rogue gallery, including his <laughs> Gorilla Grodd, which. Uh, I've never really thought of as a Batman villain, but he's there. And there's Two-Face, and it's a very uh, interesting take on Batman. And if you like manga, you like anime, uh, Batman Ninja is probably the, the closest thing you're going to see uh, as far as DC doing a, a project on, like, a, or turning one of their, um, um, you know, character into an anime. And... Um, yeah, I mean, really interesting design, and um, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I actually really love the, the the movie. There, there are giant robots at the end of the the movie, by the way. All right, we are now in. Some, it looks like Superman territory. This is the death of Superman, Steelbook. Um, I, I think if if uh, <laughs> if you uh, collect. Blu-rays or you know the story, you know this is only part of the story, so Death of Superman and then The Return of Superman is actually pretty much one movie, but uh, um, obviously they didn't make that second announcement until, um, you know, think of it as The Dark Knight Returns and The Dark Knight Returns Part 2, uh, where they release two movies, but even though the two movies should be as one, uh, which is um, The Death of Superman and then Return of Superman. I do not have don't think I have Return of Superman because I'm still looking for the steelbook of that one. Um, and um, and if they're too expensive, I just won't buy it. So And, and I'm not heartbroken about it because I feel um, if I can just uh, buy the digital version for like 2 or $3, then I'll do that rather than uh, try to spend like $50 on a steelbook. Okay. All right, Death of Superman. I'm going to move this back a little. Okay, we got Teen Titans, uh, the Judas Contract. Now, um, this is based on the very classic um, George Perez, uh, Marv Wolfman story. Uh, and uh, <laughs> unfortunately, here's the back of it. Uh, uh, that's Terra. Uh, that's uh, Changlin, or Beast Boy, as is known in the new universe. Uh, okay, so unfortunately, um, this is not your daddy's Judas contract because uh, what happened is uh, DC rebooted and they took out Cyborg. And so Cyborg in the new 52 is now in the Justice League and he is not in the Teen Titans. So it kind of is very problematic because when you're retelling, you're trying to retell the Judas contract and you don't have Cyborg in the team. So they replaced Cyborg with um, Blue Beetle, uh, which mm, I guess, <laughs> and um, and it's uh, basically it's really not the same. But uh, what's cool about this is they actually um, flew Marv and George in to uh, do a film for a special feature, and they really talk uh, about the creation of the Judas Contract and also the creation of the Teen Titans. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Uh, this is a really a great uh, Blu-ray to get. Um, uh, if, even if you can't find the Steelbook, um, getting it on regular um, Blu-ray disc is, is fine because um, it does have all the special features. And uh, anyway, so if you love the Teen Titans, this this is pretty cool to have. Like I said, I'm not too happy about uh, Cyborg being replaced there. All right, the uh, uh, Justice League New Frontier. Uh, this is the commemorative uh, edition. Uh, so what happened is they um, Warner Brother actually released this earlier uh, as a regular Blu-ray and DVD, and I actually own the DVD version, I think, because it came with an action figure. And so uh, they re-released it under Steelbook. So this one is not uh, a Target exclusive. I believe you can get this uh, pretty much at any retailer. So Best Buy or any of them, because this uh, edition here, uh, it comes as a steelbook. And um, so it featured uh, Darwin Cook's uh, artwork here, beautiful here. And uh, the sad thing is uh, the artist had passed away. So so this is kind of sad and kind of 
I know. <clears throat> All right, we got Justice League: The Fatal Five. Um, uh, once again, we're back to being a Target exclusive. Uh, so, uh, Fate of Five. Um, actually, you know what? I meant to watch this, but I haven't watched it. Uh, uh, I just, just really didn't have much interest in it, but it looks like it's maybe the Legion of Superheroes, if, if it looks like uh, the Fate of Fives are involved. Uh, I'm going to have to like remind myself to watch this. Uh, just a Gleek Dark. This is based on... Um, uh, John Constantine's group, even though Batman is uh, front and center here, uh, this is actually not a team led by Batman. I think it's John Constantine's team, but whatever. Um, Batman sells, so Batman's in the front here. Um, Swamp Thing's in it. Um, looks like Z Zatanna, Deadman, uh, Etrigan, the demon. And then in the back, we have more action posed by that same team. Um, so yeah, so Justice League Dark is basically Justice League, but they deal in supernatural stuff. Uh, Suicide Squad, Hell to Pay. This is actually a very good film. Um, there's It's very adult. Uh, I believe there's nudity in this one. Uh, animated nudity, so... Um, yeah, this is, uh, was a very, very fun a character dies and stuff. And it's, uh, it's like, I, there's some of the twists in there I didn't see coming. And I was, actually really enjoyed this one. And here is the back of the steelbook. All right. Batman versus Two-Face. Uh, boy, William Shatner as the voice of Two-Face. So, uh... I don't think I've watched this one actually. I own it on Blue on Steelbook, so here is the back of the cover. Uh, Wonder Woman Bloodlines. Um, this was fairly recent. This just came out. This is probably the last Steelbook I picked up from the DC animated series. Uh, these uh, the animated series, the Warner Brothers. Uh, they've released some other ones that I uh, like the Superman one that I haven't picked up because. Um, you know, uh, once they sell out these steel books, you just you just can't find them, or some target just don't stock them. So, uh, um, I just haven't found any. And if um, and if uh, I can't find it, I'm just not gonna buy the regular version. So because obviously I have to have it for my steel book collection. And anyway, so this is an original Wonder Woman series the story. I think I don't know if it's based on a comic, but the cheetahs in the back there. Alright. Wonder Woman. Um this is ba this okay, so originally Wonder Woman came out, uh the, the cartoon, the animated series came out way back and um uh, maybe ninety one, nineteen ninety two or I don't I don't remember twenty something, twenty uh, two thousand one. And anyway, so they re released it as a commemorative uh, edition once again with a steelbook version and I believe you can get the steelbook version at any retailer. Uh, it's not exclusive to Target. The back you have S Steve Trevor and Wonder Woman. Uh, but yeah, this is um, this story is actually very loosely based on George Perez's um, Wonder Woman. So, uh, and I think that is all of my um, uh, animated series stuff uh, or um, uh, Warner Brothers. So we're gonna get to um, regular um, Steelbook for uh, DC Comics. So this is uh, Best Buy's um, exclusive cover to uh, Steelbook of Suicide Squad. It is glossy, and uh, I I think it's pretty cool. But uh, they uh, eventually release another Steelbook version of the Suicide Squad that you can get much cheaper. So this is the original, the first uh, Steelbook that came out, <laughs> and this is Man of Steel. Um, uh, the they re Best Buy reissue these and this is a Jim Lee cover. Um, it's pretty pretty interesting. Uh, in the back, it's a black and white version of uh, Jim Lee. I think um, you know I love Jim Jim Lee. I met him, uh, but uh, I'm not too crazy about his current uh, art stuff. Uh, I just think they're very sketchy. Um, all right, so. 
We have Justic Leak, um, Jim Lee um, art once again, uh, doing the, the steelbook cover of Justic League. Um, there's Cyborg, Wonder Woman, Flash, Aquaman, Superman. And then uh, on the back is a black and white version of it. This is also a Best Buy exclusive and um, uh, obviously Batman sales, <laughs> so they put Batman in the front here. Uh, you know, Superman uh, all the way in the back. <clears throat> uh, this is Aquaman. I don't recall who did the artwork, but it's not, I don't think it's Jim Lee, um, but it's uh, uh, probably uh, one of the DC uh, artists that's probably known for doing Aquaman. Uh, I could be wrong. And the back is just a trident. This is Aquaman. Okay, so. <clears throat> As a special bonus, we are going to look at Target uh, book edition. So this is Wonder Woman. Uh, these are book format. And um, they are exclusive to Target. Uh, so Best Buy will get the steelbook version and then uh, Target will get the book version of the movie. And this is a lenticular cover. So you can see Diane Prince. Uh, Diane Prince, and then what a woman on the other side. Alright, this is Superman versus Batman. Um, this is, a, once again, it's a lenticular cover, so Superman. Uh, well, Batman. And then um, on the back, it's Wonder Woman, <laughs> who actually is also in the film if you have not seen this film. And uh, it's a book edition uh, uh, version, uh, so the booklet is, uh, is I don't know, it just shows artwork and story. And then we have Man of Steel, so I actually own Man of Steel twice. And then, um, let's see, okay, so we got Zod here, it looks like, and then Superman. Um, a lot of people um, didn't love Man of Steel. I thought the the film was a little too dark uh, for a character that's about hope and uh, love and you know and it's something that like a kid should be able to go into a movie to see not not a dark uh, oh I bought this used by the way so um, so it's, I don't know I just feel like it, it was a little too dark and then and then the show Superman killing somebody that uh, is probably a big no no in the um, kind of like uh, uh, character I mean uh, 